Hi, good evening, Sneheshish. Thank you for uh, accepting our invitation for an analytics shala uh, talk that we are doing with our alumni. So thank you once again for accepting this invite. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my experience. Thanks. Absolutely. That, you know, uh, let's start. I know journey. So let's start uh, by, you know, asking how was your journey from IV to data science? What was, what, what, what all went through? So from IV, uh, once I finished my course, I was working previously in ICICI Bank. So I left the job and came to Bangalore searching for a job. And after two and a half months, close to two and a half months, I got an op opportunity in Bridge IT as a mm -hmm. business analyst. But over the years of five, five years, I feel fortunate that company has given me a lot of opportunity and currently I'm working as a manager. So I got a significant growth in my career from business analyst to manager role where I am leading a 10 to 12 members team currently uh, within a span of five years. It's close to five and a half years. Five and a half years. That's quite a bit of time. I remember when you were working and, uh, you know, I simply remember this incident that you you were entering the class a little late and every time it was like, why are you late? <laughs> and then I also remember how determined you were to get into analytics because once you quit your job, you were in IV when IV opened and you were there till it closed, sitting and just studying. And, you know, this is one example that I keep giving to all my, you know, people who say I don't have time. I give them your example. You know, I had one student who actually, you know, was so determined to get into this industry that he did nothing but studied. So wonderful. Yeah. And uh, your educational background is also something which is non-technical. You're from BBA background, correct? correct? Yes. And yes. this is again yeah. one thing that, uh, you know, people uh, fear when they want to get into analytics because somehow in their head it is that, you know, it's meant for technical guys. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, if you look at the industry and the uh, people who are working, it's vast. It's not specific to a particular field. So if you mm -hmm. see the last five year changes, earlier, if you are a statistician, economics, you have an edge. Over the time, it's moving towards engineering background because you have all those deep learning architecture right. where you need to do too much coding rather mm -hmm. than doing less analysis, more coding to get an output and which will be customized in a product. So it will be a product form. So people will not look at the, let's say a PPT type of solution when we started. So in five mm -hmm. years, the journey has changed. But still people from variety of background are joining. Similarly, if you don't have coding background, we, we don't have coding background, but in IV we learned a little bit. Then in our jobs, in the starting times, we need to learn. And that time we need to work hard. So I guess it's a myth you can join, but yeah, your path will be a little bit different and you need to work a little bit hard because you absolutely. didn't learn those things from the beginning. I that's completely the... agree with you that, you know, that's absolutely correct. So it's, it's a mix, you know, I have also, you know, met a lot of analysts who probably does not know coding at all and still they're very successful. But you are absolutely correct in saying that since machine learning, AI, deep learning has come into existence and they are picking up pretty fast. So some bit of coding if you know that is always good in Thanks. growth of your career that's great okay uh, can you just tell me that you know since you're a manager right now and i know that you also do a lot of hiring you go to colleges and you are responsible for getting new set of uh, talent for your organization so once you're doing this hunting of new talent what are the skill sets exactly what you're looking for uh we obviously look for the statistic economist, uh, economy, uh, people passing from economy statistics background, mm -hmm. people passing from engineering background, but we look for fast skills that we, we've hired people from metallurgy department, which is nowhere related to coding from IIT or NIIT, those places. So what we essentially look for is your ability to solve a problem. So when we give, so in college hiring, we most have, most of the times we give guesstimate type of questions and how mm -hmm. you are solving those problems, which Pratik said pro yeah. taught us during our time. So I, uh, I believe that is still now there because mm -hmm. that's important. How you are structuring a problem when we are giving, that is what we look for. And people, if people have some skills in, because some of the courses nowadays are teaching R, 
or Python mm -hmm. in stat courses also. So that gets an edge, little bit edge, but it's not like we are looking for people only learn those. We look for people who have that ability to crunch the data or get those insights out because that is important. Rest of the things you can teach once they join. Obviously, we have a, a COA program where we dedicate uh, time and invest people to teach them those things. Be it R, be it Python, be it machine learning, we have a uh, fast COA program running and which mm -hmm. a big part of it I am heading in Bridge IDW. So we generally look for how you are attempting those problems. That's the critical thing. How you are right. solving the thinking about those guesstimate problems. Those are the typical questions we ask them. So basically more on logic development rather than, you know, uh, exactly. just thinking about what is the base uh, thing. So, exactly. so how do you, how you're approaching the problem is very important. Exactly. So if I remember correctly, one time, you know, when your company came and were doing hiring in Calcutta, the first round was pretty much the aptitude test. So a lot of people, okay. you know, you selected. That's from the generic that. test. That's, That's the generic test. test. That and then there was a group discussion group as well. Okay. Now, a uh, lot of time people don't understand the importance of group discussion or why the companies are taking group discussion, especially, you know, when these people, what we call technical people in analysis and analytics world. So, uh, so it's about if you get two minutes or one and a half minutes time, how you are putting your point. So we give up. So our case studies generally what we do, we give up a problem and some data. So mm -hmm. we give five to 10 minutes time, how you are looking at that data and coming up some insights in one and a half minutes or two minutes. But people sometimes feel that if I voice out more and if I, if I'm shouting, that will help. That actually doesn't help. You need to prove your point. And it's not about how you are telling what you are telling is more important is more important but they are saying it's also important rather than how they are saying will generally happen once they come into the corporate culture correct absolutely correct okay so jd's uh, definitely helps you uh, you know just you're just looking at that the, a person is able to think able to speak you know, I also keep telling candidates that it's very important to be able to communicate in this industry and to have a little bit of assertiveness, yeah. not that you're imposing yourself, but assertiveness is definitely required. Thanks, All right. And bridge to uh, bridge I to I is also, you know, into different kind of industries like you guys are working in marketing as well, finance. Can you just talk about what all industries your company is working in? Huh, we are majorly working in uh, CPG, consumer package good. CTD, okay. where I am working, it's consumer tech and durables, all Fortune 500 tech companies and some of the leading manufacturing companies. There is an enterprise tech, which specifically look at the B2B business mm -hmm. and finance and insurance. These are the major five sectors we are working. And we have some horizontal uh, team that is called supply chain. So which supply chain works across multiple uh, business domains. So it's cutting across multiple business domains. So in terms of business domains, these are the five major domains we are working. We All are right. where we are focusing. And since you're, you know, you are at a higher up manager position right now, probably you can also help us to understand what, uh, you know, what do you see the future of this industry? You know, let's say five years from now, what do you think are the tool sets would be still, you know, utilized? What are the techniques or the theories that will still be in existence? And uh, what industry people are going to get benefited more uh, by getting into this industry? Yeah, what tools, first of all, what tools will be there? It's very difficult. Uh, I'll tell my journey. I learned SAS from uh, IB. Then I started a project here in SAS. Then I moved to R and then Python. Now mm. PySpark is getting used because of large scale deployment. You need multi cluster deployment. So PySpark. So technology will evolve. What mm. will remain there during my five years journey, I understand your way of thinking, your conceptual knowledge. So Packages may change, machine learning, you are doing Exibust or Random Forest, whatever, the packages may evolve. But if you know the concept, how machine learning is different from statistical modeling, how deep learning architectures are there, you can evolve over time. Obviously, you need to learn. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a changing industry. And if you are stagnant, that's a difficult thing. In terms of uh, specific which industry will, I guess every industry will benefit. And thanks to COVID, the slowdown, little bit slowdown, you can see all over economy is there in this mm -hmm. segment sector also. There is hiring is not that up to the speed, but over time, what we believe, and we have done a lot of analysis also, that 
actually industry is moving towards where more and more data is a priority to give a example people are now looking at how can i enable data in my supply chain which which is a legacy system they have a mm-hmm. multi column supply chain multiple distributor network but if i have data visibility much more whenever this kind of situation comes i can rapidly change my plan so the data and its importance are getting more and more to come to the retail more and more retail companies are going to the uh, online industry so again okay. data personalization uh, a big example uh, if you have yesterday i have seen an ad of cadbury i don't mm. know whether you have seen that it's called hyper personalization they are actually looking at the pin code and it's ai driven such a beautiful ad is yeah. done by through ai technology mm-hmm. so industry has a lot of potential and there will be lot of uh, new jobs that will come in this industry the only thing is uh, you need to keep up to the speed you need keep on learning and your uh, fundamental should be clear uh, no matter how much we move it still you need to join multiple data sources you need to have a understanding left join versus right join to give example to you those are fundamental and those needs to be there unless you have those you cannot evolve over time because packages will change the logic remains same essentially okay. r versus python your logic remains same it's absolutely. just a way of coding change yeah absolutely you're working with some libraries or you're working with some packages right. or the interface only but uh, the basics will remain absolutely the same right. now you know a lot of time you know uh, people don't understand that okay you are learning a particular language like r or python or sas whatever right. it may be but at the end of the day it is very important to have some kind of business sense put some business sense into the data that you're looking at now uh would, can you help us to uh, you know understand that how a person can evolve this thought process of how to give uh, you know for especially the freshers who have no industry understanding no corporate exposure whatsoever and if they want to develop this thing what are the ways that they would be able to do this yeah that's a very good question people start building the model before looking at the data and that is very important so i would say that let's say you are doing uh, as a fresher uh, during iv also we did mm-hmm. that customer churn model uh, or those kind of model so you need to understand forget about the industry when a customer will churn as a consumer mm-hmm. you need to relate those things there may be some problem which is industry specific which you may not be able to relate but you need to look for why something happened and mm-hmm. what are the possible reason here you need to your logical thinking is more important rather than first you build some hypothesis that these are the possible reason then you look at the data the mean median typical uh, initial analysis that we do what is the standard deviation in the data how the mean is is it normally distributed or the distribution is not normal the, uh, the distribution is different those way it help you understand the cracks of the data mm-hmm. uh, which essentially help you to build the solution but many people think that okay i need to build model i try five different models it gives me output but it's still a black box when you are explaining it to the client you need to give still them even if you are doing a machine learning model you still need to explain them why this variable is important what right. it essentially mean for them so that understanding and that way of looking at the data is very essential so i i like uh, you know we should encourage people to do a little bit of research little bit of googling you know exactly. google is a super super tool right now in today's era people search for packages in google people so search for this kind of techniques in google also how to right. understand data there are a lot of a uh, lot of good uh, research also available people should look for those exactly But this is also equally important which people are forgetting uh it's not about building the model the consumption how you convince the business there your business or how you uh, analyze the data that is very very essential. that is very essential because you know or even my one of my professors when i was learning in us he said uh soft is a garbage in garbage out that is something i truly believe in <laughs> until is you don't know what you're giving into the software you will yeah. not understand what it's giving out to you yeah. that's there uh do you also uh, would advise uh, the freshers to you know participate in some uh, hackathons and some competitions in order to make the resume good do the companies really you know give an extra credit or uh, find that yes if somebody is taking participating in these competition it's healthy and this this would be a good candidate for our company 
Yes, what we uh, absolutely correct. What we look for their interest when they are uh, uh, doing some kagel or hackathon kind of competition. It shows their interest that mm. how they are, and when that kind of things comes, we also evaluate that the problem they mentioned. We ask some questions to understand whether they actually participated or Participate. not. Those kind of things correct. are. But if they actually do, it actually enhances their skills also when they are mm -hmm. uh, they are giving answer. it shows their confidence that they actually participate try different things they may not come to the ultimate answer but they try different things and it helped them it helped uh, we saw many people and uh, uh, as a organization we encourage everyone so i also participated many hackathons during initial mm. days we uh, we encourage people to uh, participate in hackathon in bridgeite way uh, in a year we have one or two hackathons where people uh, within bridgeite way everyone participate So All it, right. it it help us to innovate some of the solution also because different people have different thinking which comes at uh, during that it's very helpful. That's a very wonderful concept to apply at a organization level, like in within yes. the organization. This is a beautiful way of doing brainstorming on a question. That's exactly. Nice. Very nice. So Sneha Shish with the lockdown and all of us working from home. So what do you do apart from in analytics? <laughs> what keeps you busy? apart from phone calls and analytics <laughs> so i am doing mba from symbiosis executive mba it's a two and a half years course mm -hmm. which will be completed in december so that keeps me busy also i am doing some reading uh, about uh, different books i love to read uh, mm -hmm. so that is what keeps me busy other than some netflix and right now ipl so IPL. mba was <laughs> mba was a little bit hectic uh, managing office and then doing mba so it's a regular class weekend uh -huh. regular class 9 to 6 okay. so kind of iv thing iv yeah. <laughs> iv was a small uh, time two and a half or three hours it's around 6 7 hours so yeah. but i thought that mba will be a right addition to my uh, to my cv so that's why i mm. have gone ahead and come almost in on the verge of completing uh, the mba oh my god <laughs> too much work too much things on your plate that's good <laughs> yeah very nice very nice all right sneha shish thank you once again for giving us your time Bye.